ان الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ومن يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي الذي تساءلون به والارحام انه كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد قل انما حرم ربي الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن والاثم والبغي والبغي بغير الحق وان تشركوا بالله ما لم ينزل به سلطانا وان تقولوا على الله ما لا تعلمون سي My Lord has forbidden immoralities. What is apparent of them and what is concealed. And he has forbidden sin and oppression without right. And that you associate partners to Allah which he has sent down no authority. And he has forbidden that you say about Allah that which you have no knowledge of my brothers and sisters we are living in a time and in a place where alhamdulillah many people now are seeking knowledge asking questions about the religion but the thing that regretfully is happening is they don't know the sources where to ask where to go and in particular the youth now are asking so many questions so therefore we need to be reminded of this importance of seeking the correct knowledge and asking the correct people just because you are asked a question does not mean that you need to answer somebody else will answer it don't feel obliged that you need to answer this question somebody may see us they may see me or may see yourself in a position where you might have knowledge and this can be a very dangerous situation they may approach you and ask you a question which you have no knowledge of but you feel under pressure and obliged that you must answer and allah says قل انما حرم ربي and at the end of the ayah allah says an taqulu ala allah ma la ta'lamun that you may say about allah that which you have no knowledge of so we need to be careful we need to understand that the scholars in fact the sahaba when they were asked a question they are not ashamed to say i do not know they were not ashamed to say i don't know because if you don't answer the person will just go and ask somebody else eventually he will get his answer so don't worry about the person worry about what you say first don't feel under pressure to respond to them not only with the sahaba in a position to say i do not know someone greater than the sahaba Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked of three matters of which he answered two and he left the third he was asked of the people of the cave 
He was asked of Dhul Qarnayn. And he was asked about the Ruh. Did he answer immediately? No. He kept silent until the Wahy came down. Until Allah revealed to him in Surah Al Kahf, where Allah responded to the people of the cave and responded to Dhul Qarnayn. And then in another Surah, Allah responds to the Ruh. And what does he say about the Ruh? Min Amru Rabbi. It's from the knowledge of Allah, from my Lord. So even here, the Rasulullah didn't feel obliged that he has to answer. So why do we put ourselves in this position where we must answer? And this is why Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, Fas'alu, ask Ahl al dhikr the people of knowledge, in kuntum la ta'lamu, if you do not know. He didn't say go and try and derive the answer to, for yourself. He didn't say discuss amongst yourselves until you find an answer. Allah retained it to the people of knowledge and therefore we must retain it to the people of knowledge. Not to ask one another. Because a person who speaks without knowledge doesn't realize, they do not realize what he is doing, in fact, is as if he is signing, signing a statement, a power of attorney. Like he took a piece of paper and he signed, this is what Allah wants. كَبُرَتْ كَلِمَةً تَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَفْوَاهِمْ They, as if they say, this is what Allah wants. And this is the dangers of speaking without any knowledge. Because on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when we are brought forth, when Allah says to you, why did you say this? What is your hujjah? What is, what is your response? What is your evidence? Is it going to be the Qur'an and the Sunnah? Ya, Rasul, ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, I learned this from you and your Rasul. Or will it be Ya Rabbi, I tried to figure it out myself? <coughs> And this is why Allah says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّي إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّي And the scholars, in fact about this ayah, the scholars mention that this ayah is revealed بالترتيب in order of what is in order of what is haram all the way to the greatest haram. And if you notice, Allah, just before the end, He says what? And that you may associate partners with Allah. And then after Allah says, So saying something without any knowledge about Allah is in fact more sinful than shirk itself. More sinful than shirk itself. And even if we were to look at this ayah and say, okay, maybe there's no tartib. Maybe there's no order. It's just random. The beginning of the ayah, Allah still said, إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّي Allah still said it's haram. And this is why we must refrain from it. And this is not just for people giving fatwa. It's not just about fatwas and rulings. But today we find it also about da'wah. When we try and do da'wah to the non-Muslim, or sometimes to the Muslim who lacks in knowledge, or to the Muslim who is wavering in and out of his religion, we try and speak to them and try and break it down for them. And sometimes we may slack in order to win their hearts. But here you're building a foundation. And if we slack with the foundation, then the rest of the building is weak. 
It could crumble, it could collapse at any moment. So we must have the foundation correct from the beginning. Sometimes we may hear something from somewhere or from someone and then we spread it. We're very quick to spread it. But we need to verify first. For example, a question which is asked today in our time is where is Allah? Where is Allah? And if Allah sees and hears everything, then where is He? Alhamdulillah, we have come to the knowledge and we have Allah has blessed us and gave us the knowledge. But we need to be careful of our youth. Because in their schools they are asked this question. There are debates going on in the schools. Whether they bring non-Muslims into Islam or the non-Muslims may cloud the judgment and cloud the knowledge of the Muslim. And the, our Muslim children are asked, where is Allah? Do you know what the response of our children is? Allah is everywhere. Allah is everywhere. Allah knows and sees everything. Is this a correct answer? They have mixed good and bad together. Allah knows and sees everything. But is Allah everywhere? Is Allah, if, every, if Allah is everywhere, then He will be in places which is not befitting for me to even mention in this masjid. And Allah tells us, Ala al -arsh istawa. Upon the throne, He ascended. Upon the throne, He ascended. But Allah's knowledge, Allah's sight, Allah's hearing sees everything. Even the depths of the oceans, even the droplets of rain that falls, Allah knows when it will fall and when it will reach the ground and which spot it will land on. Even the leaf from the tree, which is blown as it falls, Allah knows exactly where it will land, just before, it, way before it lands. So we must be careful of what we say. Another thing we see, we have seen spreading through the Ummah and lying against Allah is through messages, through WhatsApp or IMA or any other messaging services where someone may, might send a message and say, if you say this 50 times and you do this 100 times and you do this and you do this, then this will happen. Min aina laka hada? From what authority do you have to say this? Where is the knowledge? Where is the dalil in which you have spoken? Who told you this? Come with your evidence or remain silent. Wallahi, it is better for you to remain silent. And not just that, at the end of the message, sometimes they sign it by saying, if you do not give this, if you do not send this to 20 of your contact list or 100 on your contact list, then tomorrow you will see bad things come your way. Who told you this? This is corruption spreading in the Ummah. They have spoken against Allah with no knowledge. And Allah has said, the Rasul in the hadith has said, Whosoever speaks of Allah or of the Quran with no knowledge, meaning from himself, then let him be prepared for his place in the hellfire. Is that not enough to scare you? To scare me? That whoever speaks with no knowledge, he is guaranteed the hellfire. Nas'alullah as -salam. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, 
ولا تقف ما ليس لك به علم إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤولا and do not follow that that of which you have no knowledge indeed إن السمع indeed your hearing البصر your sight الفؤاد your heart all of these will be questioned that which you look at that which you hear that which enters your heart that which you speak everything will be questioned so why do we put ourselves in a position to speak without any knowledge when Allah will bring us forth and ask us about this everything we do and say will be questioned so we must be aware of what we say and only speak with knowledge and with certainty and the issue is once you say something once you say something it is then spread like wildfire and what you intended for one person has now reached a thousand and it is still spreading and they will say what they say, I have this fatwa, so and so said it. So and so said it. They will bring it back onto your head, not themselves. Keep yourself free from this and only say what is verified and authentic and ask Allah, ask Allah for guidance with thabat and for firmness and only ask of the people of knowledge. And if you do not know, don't, do not be ashamed to say, I do not know. Why is it that if a person was to ask you about a medical question? The first response, the first response is ask a doctor. <coughs> or somebody asks you <coughs> about something of this dunya, of life. And we say, ask the expert in this field. Yet, when it comes to the religion, subhanallah, everybody's a mufti. When it, becomes, when it comes to the religion, everybody can give a fatwa, mashaAllah. Now they have Shaykh Google. Anybody just goes on Google and says, here's the answer. Why do we feel like we must answer? Wallahi, there is no shame in saying, I do not know. Or saying, let me check. Or saying so and so has more knowledge, you should go to them. Just like in medicine, you have to learn and study and gain that knowledge before you're allowed to practice. Just like that, likewise the deen. The deen requires knowledge and studying before being able to speak and to give a fatwa or ruling. And one of the dangerous settings is when you have a group who will sit and discuss amongst themselves the religion. A group of people who are not students of knowledge, who are not ulama, the general public, sitting as a group and begin discussing the religion amongst themselves. And each one throws his own opinion or something he heard on YouTube or research on Google or heard somebody else say, and here he throws it into the mix. And everybody in that setting comes out corrupted. Because all the knowledge is then mixed together, and you don't, don't know which is correct and which is not. And where today is when that setting, in fact, is haram from the beginning. A group who gather, sit, and smoke shisha, or smoke weed, take drugs, or gamble, or even a mix of all these, <coughs> and then they want to throw a fatwa from one to another. Then they want to speak about Allah and say what is halal and what is haram. So we, so we must learn, I do, I do not know. This must become part of our lives. For if you say, I do not know, then they will teach you and you will learn. But if you say, I know, 
then they will continue to ask you until you don't know. So we must learn, I do not know. Learn the knowledge and ask those with knowledge. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ My dear brothers and sisters, we are in the last week of Ramadan and it is not befitting for me to come down from this position I am in now until I remind myself and everybody here inshallah that perhaps Laylatul Qadr is upon us any one of these days. So let us be of those who wear Allah the way he intended or not the way how we understand. Let us be of those who only speak with knowledge or refer to someone with knowledge. And let us not be hasty and say something which we may be questioned. Because in the sama wal basara wal fu'adu wal fu'ada kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula. Ya ibadullah, sallu ala nabi kama amarkum Allah. فأبدأ بنفسه ثم أثنى بملائكته فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين وصل على محمد في الآخرين وصل على محمد في كل وقت وحين وصل على محمد في الملائكة إلى إلى يوم الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم علمنا القرآن الكريم وجعلنا من عبادك المخلصين إنك ولي ذلك وعلى كل شيء قدير اللهم احفظ الإسلام والمسلمين وكل 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 بلد الأرض في كل بلد وأرض يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة